Okay, hi, I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes to view this short video on how to interpret your child's student progress report relative to MAP testing. The MAP test, uh, Portage Community School District, gives children the opportunity to take it three times a year, in the fall, the winter, and the spring, and it provides us really good information relative to the child's current academic readiness, how much growth or improvement in their achievement has been shown over time, and then finally, what is the child's relative academic standing, both compared to children at the same grade level in district, as well as the hundreds of thousands of children nationally at that same grade level. The student progress report, there's two main sections. What I'm showing you on this screen is the first section. This is all of the data in a numeric format. At the top of the screen, in red, I've um, isolated there, bolded out the child's name and their student ID number for privacy purposes, but that would be listed at the top. Then below that we would have the subject areas, mathematics and reading at the elementary level, and language arts at the junior high as well. To the left then we have all the different testing sessions that this child has participated in, with the most recent, in this case is spring 2010, being listed at the top. We have their grade level at the time they took the test, what score they achieved, in this case a 237. It provides a range because there's always some small margin of error on any test. What was the average score in our district for children at this grade level who took this particular test? It was a 240, slightly above this child's. What is nationally what was the average for children at this grade level who took this test? It was slightly below this child's score, a 233. The next column, student growth, is a very important column. That shows how much the child has grown in terms of their academic achievement during the year. So in this case, in the fall, they started at a 226, and in the spring, they ended up at a 237. In other words, their score increased by 11 points. What would have been expected, or what's typical of children at this level in the fall, to improve over the years, five points. So that's a good thing. This child went up more than the average growth that was expected. Finally, the last column then is the student percentile range. It's a 57 in this case. What that means is that if we had 100 students take this test at this grade level nationally, this child scored better than 57 of those students with their score of a 237. Only 43 students out of 100 would have scored higher than this child. Down below then, all the different subject areas in math are broken out. And so it shows that this child's uh, strongest area was in statistics and probability where they scored a high average. The same information is provided on the right side for the subject area of reading. And in addition, at the bottom, the child's Lexile range is provided. Lexile is a measure of the difficulty of readability of a text or a book. And you can go to www.lexile.com and you can uh, retrieve the Lexile uh, score for any book that you wish, as well as look up different books within that Lexile range. At the bottom of this report, as I mentioned, language usage is also provided because we do that test in addition to reading and math at the junior high. And then all the different terms that I highlighted are also explained below. Then the same information on the second part of this report is provided in a line graph. So we have, in this case, mathematics and reading. There are three lines. The dark blue is the child scores over time. The orange are, is the district average over time. And the blue is the national average over time. And what we want to see, obviously, is we want to see an upward trend or improvement in scores over time. In mathematics for this child, it went up and it went down. And it's about flat over time. Reading is more the trend that we'd like to see. Because although it's gone up and down, which can be expected, depending upon the testing session, over time, that line is definitely going up. And then again, we have the same information, the explanatory notes at the bottom. In summary then, this particular report, Student Progress Report, provides MAP scores, both in text and graph format. The important thing we want to look at is growth over time, hopefully see an upward trend. If the child's above the norms, how do we continue to improve? If they're below the norm, how do we help close that gap? A good question to ask from the parents and students' perspective would be, what's the district plan to do this? And then for the parent to help us, how can you assist in helping your child? I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes to view this video. Thank you.